dear students as you are aware that you are here to listen to me speaking on hazlitt's essay on familiar style uh students i'm going to change my whole process of presenting the video lecture earlier those five, in those five six lectures that i have recorded i tried to follow a pattern of talking about the essayist and then about the essay summarizing the essay evaluating the essay and then a sort of a critical analysis what i'm going to do here is a kind of a very chaotic discussion and this is what i do in my classrooms also i create a chaos and this is what i'm going to create here also so when i'm talking about hazlitt and in his is uh, his essay uh, on familiar style i would like to begin with a statement a sentence the sentence is taken from the essay itself and i quote the say statement i quote the sentence coleridge says sorry hazlitt says i hate to see a parcel of big words without anything in them friends i look at this sentence as the key sentence of this essay the whole thesis of this essay has been developed around this sentence and what is that sentence let me repeat again i hate to see a parcel of big words without anything in them students hazlitt william hazlitt was one of the great prose stylists of the 19th century and in this essay on familiar style he explains his preference for plain words and the popular modes of construction students is actually talking about the use of plain words and the popular modes of construction this essay on familiar style was originally published in the london magazine and it was reprinted in one of hazlitt's collection titled table talk in 1822 hazlitt as you know is a very prolific prose writer of the romantic period his collected works run into 20 volumes and they have a total of around 8000 pages he has been seen as a master of sarcasm a great expert of invective and irony students hazlitt was not just a writer he was actually blessed with a keen insight which he developed and exploited in multiple ways he was a poet he was a painter he was an essayist he was a historian and we look at him as a literary critic also my two lectures on lamb contain a photograph of lamb in the very title itself and the photograph that i have taken for charles lamb was actually the painting of hazlitt dear students in addition to these accomplishments he was 
a very social man he was intensely social and he was friend of too many great of his times and the list includes Coleridge Wordsworth and Shelley Hazlitt was the son of a Unitarian minister and uh, after a brief stay in America where he was unable to adjust he came back to England and uh, his literary genius flourished there flowered there in England after his meeting with Coleridge so Coleridge was the one who influenced his, his mind as well as his art to a very great extent. From 1814 till his death, Hazlitt contributed to a lot of journals and magazines of his times. He contributed for the Edinburgh Review, the Examiner, the Times and the London Magazine. His well-known essays were collected in several titles. I'm mentioning a few titles here. For example, Round Table is one title of his collection of essays. Another is Table Talk or Original Essays on Men and Manners. One more famous collection by Hazlitt was The Spirit of the Age or called Contemporary Portraits. So these are some of the collections of his essays. Dear students, Hazlitt hold bold and radical views and by his radical views, by his bold views, he attracted a lot of attention. He also attracted a lot of criticism because of his bold and radical opinions. But he was not deterred by those criticism and he wrote undauntedly. That Hazlitt wrote a number of essays and on a wide range of subject, on a variety of subject. He was a very keen observer of life and his sharp memory remembered the past incidents. He was capable of remembering his past with astonishing vividness and details. He was very eager to inquire in human life. He was very eager to look into the, the all different varieties of human life. Thus he was capable of writing on a very vast range of subjects. His essays deal with the world of men and women. They record their actions, assigns their motives and they exhibit their whims and fancies. Hazlitt writes on authors. When he is doing that role of a literary critic, he writes on authors. He writes on books of several kinds. He writes on politics, sports, stage, everything. He writes on them, on all these topics, on all these areas with equal wit and wisdom. He had very original ideas, very original views and opinions he had. And all this, this originality, this vividness, this vastness of his theme, this ability to uh, have that memory of the past. So all this adds a very great charm to his essays. A very important characteristic of Hazlitt as an essayist is his informality. He is quite informal in his life also, in his essays also. He puts his ideas in a very informal manner. But this informality of Hazlitt is unlike Lamb's informality. 
has its informality depends upon systematic inquiry into the topic so in spite of this informality that was inherent in his writings hazlitt's essays are not light they are not non serious they are serious they are very thought provoking and the essays by hazlitt show a very philosophical bent of mind of their writer so he uses very thought provoking ideas in his essays he is a keen observer of of the life around him and he is more interested in ideas rather than the forms a large number of his essays are actually abstract ideas or rather you can say based on abstract ideas such as egotism reason imagination the fear of death so these kind of ideas are taken up by hazlitt in his essays uh every time when he takes up an essay he takes he actually takes up a leading idea and he talks about that leading idea in his essay new ideas are brought forward brought forward and this was the underlying principle this was the underlying practice in his collection of essays also especially especially the two very famous collection of essays titled the round table and table talk their students hazlitt was not a writer who believed in moralizing no he never indulges in moralizing and according to his critics he is rather a moral historian than a moral philosopher their students another very important characteristic of hazlitt is the way he enjoys his writings the way he enjoys his subject and the the, the his ability to observe so enjoyment and observation can be a very important aspect a very important characteristic of his essays hazlitt has conveyed his enjoyment and observations through his essays and whatever the theme of his essays each of them is a reflection of human nature the essays are a reflection of men who lived and loved life the essays are actually a reflection of a man the man called hazlitt who lived and loved life with very penetrating sympathy and very penetrating feelings hazlitt observes life the reflection that we find in hazlitt's essay are not the product of his head rather they are they, they come straight from from his heart it is true that he has personal prejudices and and he does not hide these personal prejudices in his essays sometimes his personal prejudices often uh, vitiate his judgments also uh, dear students uh, as you know that coleridge hazlitt was a romantic essays in fact he is the great trio one of the great trio of uh, the, the the great prose stylists the great pro essays of the romantic period lamb de quincy and william hazlitt so he belongs to a group of those personal essays so autobiographical elements personal elements that very important romantic tendency is there in the essays of hazlitt also in his hands essays became a means of self expression he puts himself in the center of whatever be the topic of his essay he is there so whatever the topic of his essay is he is there at the center of his essay he often glides into the past he weaves the texture of his essays and threads a memory so thus he reveals his life in his essays 
he reveals his mind in his essays and he uh, describes, he reveals his uh, heart in his essays. He is passionately alive to men and matters around him. If he finds fiable and frailties in the men around him, he ridicules them too. His writings are thus an exposure of the follies of the society. His writings are an exposure of the follies of human life in general. When we look at the prose style of Hazlitt, we find that he writes with convictions, with very deep and firm perspective. He writes with an aim to communicate with his readers. He has a style of his own. And this style of Coleridge, dear friends, is popular as this style of Hazlitt is popular as the familiar style. Students, you know, familiarization is a very important aspect of all romantic literature across the period, across the 19th century. All romantic writers, be it poets, novelists, and these essayists, they were attempting this exercise of familiarizing or familiarization in their writings. So this Hazlitt had this style which, which we call, which is popular as the familiar style. There is no affectation in his essays, in his prose style. There is no vulgarity in, his, in it. And his prose style reflects what that is loose and unconnected. Uh, of course, it has precision of its own kind and it has purity of expression. Hazlitt, dear students, does not use archaic words. He never uses the irrelevant and he avoids superfluous use of words, superfluous use of sentences. Students, Please keep in mind that when I am talking about the style of Hazlitt, when I am talking about Hazlitt as an essayist, I am indirectly referring, uh, referring to the essay on familiar style also. So Hazlitt, as I was saying, does not use archaic words. He avoids the irrelevant in his essays and superfluous words and superfluous sentences are avoided by Hazlitt. He uses figure of speech and his use of figure of speech is very vivid, very clear. He often describes abstract ideas in very concrete terms. Uh, the sentences of Hazlitt are brief. They are sometimes abrupt also. But every time they are very vigorous and they are very direct. So a very direct kind of a style has been used by the Hazlitt. He often writes balanced antithetical sentences to present the contrasting ideas. He is, he is praised, dear students, he is praised for his use of epigrams and he has been regarded as a very great craftsman of using paradoxes. Like Bacon, he is aphoristic also. Uh, so this aphorism or the use of aphoristic style is also a very important hallmark of Hazlitt. Another very distinctive feature of Hazlitt's style is the use of quotation. So all these things can be seen, can be, can be experienced in the essay on familiar style. Uh, their students, Hazlitt is well remembered for his uh, humanistic essays and he is also very well remembered for his literary criticism. But, but you know, our concern here is uh, his essay, that very famous essay on familiar style. This essay is considered as one of his masterpieces 
and uh, it appeared it was published uh, first in london magazine and then finally in the collection titled table talk uh, in this essay Hazlitt makes out his point that how an author should convey his ideas in a manner that is comprehensible to the reader and that is clear for the reader. Uh, uh, according to Hazlitt, a familiar style uses the best words in common use and the true idiom of the language should be used. He rejects both the meaningless and the pompous. So he rejects the use of meaningless superfluous words and he also rejects the use of those very pompous kind of uh, words. Uh, let us take an example from, this, from the essay. Uh, the author wants to describe a situation uh, so Hazlitt says that say, suppose for example uh, an author wants to describe a situation in which he wants to say that a man uh, that, that a man falls down this is clearly a familiar style of writing when he writes a man falls down this is clearly a familiar style of writing and the reader is able to understand the content very easily in case as it says, in case the author chooses to describe this same situation in a pompous and archaic manner with very high sounding words, he would be saying like this, the man changes his position from perpendicularity to horizontality. The man changes his position from perpendicularity to horizontality. Their students Hazlitt rebukes this use of pompous archaic style. He says that it is good to write the man falls down. Why one should write the man changes his position from perpendicularity to horizontality. Uh, the reader who, read, who reads this, this, this sentence will be perplexed to comprehend that what the writer is going to convey in this sentence. The sentence throws too much weight on the words, but it has nothing in, 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 in the meaning. So this, according to Hazlitt, cannot be considered as a familiar style. Hazlitt says that the contents are to be explained in simple, clear and dignified words. It should neither be very high sounding nor flamboyant. And here he takes the example of Dr. Samuel Johnson. Rather he criticizes Dr. Samuel Johnson. You know that Dr. Samuel Johnson, the great neoclassicist, the great 18th century writer was fond of using indiscriminate long words and he was fond of writing uh, long sentences very indiscriminately. He was in the habit of using uh, Latin constructions, Latin phrases, Latin proverbs, Latin vocabulary uh, in, in his English uh, terminations. Uh, he was in the habit of using tall and opaque words taken from the first row of a rubric. Dear students, do you know what a rubric is? A rubric is actually uh, that portion of a prayer book wherein the first letter of the first word of each chapter is pr printed with a red ink. So, uh, Hazlitt says that Dr. Johnson chooses the first big word that comes to his mind. Such words, according to Hazlitt, are obscure and the readers cannot comprehend the meaning easily. Hence, Dr. Samuel Johnson's style of writing displeases Hazlitt. On the other hand, Hazlitt makes an exception in the essay and he gives uh, a kind of a, a kind of a forgiveness, a kind of a pardon to, to a kind of an amnesty to Charles Lamb. 
even in this context of using Latinism and archaic words, uh, he use, he gives an amnesty to Charles Lamb. He criticizes Dr. Samuel Johnson, but he he gives an exception to Charles Lamb, who, according to Hazlitt, revels in rare and archaic words. But Hazlitt says that Lamb manages somehow to use archaic phrases and yet remain interesting. He takes old writers like this. This is what Hazlitt is talking about. Brown, sorry, Lamb. Uh, he says that he takes old writers like Brown and Fuller as his role model. He borrows from them. He borrows their phrases. Uh, he follows their way of writing, but uh, his ideas are not out of date. So they are the ideas of Charles Lamb. They are startlingly original. It looks as if Lamb hides the pungency of his ideas behind the masks of a very mannered style. So the models of Lamb to Hazlitt seem to help in making the dull reader grasp Lamb's content of his writing. Uh, so this is what Hazlitt says about Lamb. Further in the essay, uh, Hazlitt uh, talks about the plain style and he says that the writer of a plain style must also give up the use of slang. His, his reprimanding is his warning the writer of a plain style that he must also give up the use of slang. As it says that the expressions known only to a small groups are not suitable for a familiar style. So says, he says that the writers who are adopting a familiar style, the writers who are trying to attempt uh, their writings in a plain style, first of all they must uh, give up the use of slang and secondly uh, they should avoid using the expressions of a small groups because the expressions known only to the small groups are not suitable for a familiar style. Hence and then uh, Hazlitt advises the writer of that plain style that familiar style that he, he should he should not find new words. Look here he is warning against coinage of new words. So according to Hazlitt, coining new words is a serious crime. He says that it is as if we are like counterfeiting currency. It's like a crime as one counterfeits the currency and this counterfeiting currency is a crime. Similarly, coining new words about which the writer is not aware, the word which is not there in the vocabulary of the writer is a serious crime. It is like counterfeiting the currency. So he says that coining new, new words is like counterfeiting King's English. Uh, he draws the attention to an important similarity between the coins, the currency and the coinage of new words. He says that the king's stamp and acceptance by the people are required for the coins and currency. Similarly, the acceptance and recognition of the people for the word is also very important. Hence, he uses the expression king's English corresponding to king's currency. And he says that as counterfeiting the king's currency is a crime, so counterfeiting King's English is also a crime. Dear friends, further in the essay, Hazlitt says that it is not easy to reproduce a familiar style. People generally think that writing in a plain style, writing in a simple manner uh, is, very, is very easy. Hazlitt warns, he says, no, it is not easy to reproduce a familiar style. Many people actually confuse the common with the familiar. It is easy. Common is easy. But familiar, according to Hazlitt, is not easy. Easy, And he says that one should not confuse with the common with the familiar. These are two very different things. So he says many people confuse a common for a familiar style and assume that a writer that to write about, uh, without uh, to write without simulation is to write at random. 
on the opposite as let says there is nothing that demands more accuracy and the simplicity of composition than the familiar style so it is the familiar style which demands accuracy and which also demands simplicity of composition so so writing in a plain style writing in a familiar style according to hazlitt is very uh, demanding uh, students at this juncture i would like to quote a big sentence from hazlitt and I'll, i'll try to quote it slowly listen to me very carefully hazlitt says and i quote it absolutely contradicts not only all unmeaning grandeur but all low cant appearances and detached disjointed slipshod statements it is not to take the first word that recommends but the greatest word in association for utilization it is not to capitulate words collectively in any associations we gratify but to embrace and avail personally of the true expression of the language unquote their students as lit's essay on familiar style gives us an insight into the style of hazlitt also the style which hazlitt adopted in his essays in his writings and the style which he is recommending here in this essay their students at this juncture i would like to take a phrase which is very close to me which i like very much the phrase is of course from hazlitt itself himself the phrase is familiar is informal familiar is informal as it says that the familiar style is not simple to achieve because while using words which do not sound ornate or pompous one has to choose words with utmost care to avoid sounding cheap common and colloquial so it's a big challenge it's a big challenge that when you are not using the pompous words when you are not using the ornate words and when you are in your writing going to prefer the use of simple words it is very challenging it is very demanding because you have to ensure that you are choosing the word with utmost care the words that are not sounding cheap words that are not sounding common and the words that are not sounding very colloquial in your writings so he says that if communication remains incomplete the author fails to put his ideas across hence the precise choice of words and their proper arrangement assumes great importance it is it is it is it is very important important since the written word must appear familiar and simultaneously it must also convey exactly what the writer wants to say and it also convey uh, exactly what the writer wants his reader to understand so it is very important to ensure for the writer it is very important to ensure that his words should be so suitable his words should be so apt that whatever he wants to convey to his reader and whatever he wants his reader to understand should be very easy to achieve dear students uh, the familiar style according to hazlitt uh, depends on three things uh, one uh, it, it depends on the subject matter so selecting the familiar style choosing the familiar style uh, deciding to write in the familiar style according to hazlitt depends on three things one should take consideration of these three things when you are when 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 one is deciding to uh, write in familiar style and what is that one should be careful about the subject matter one should be careful about the people whom you are addressing your writings and another thing is the writer's attitude towards his topic the writer's attitude also towards his reader so as it says that while choosing the familiar style uh, this this selection of the familiar style depends on the subject matter uh, the people addressed to 
and the writer's attitude towards his topic and his readers. Uh, the author's association of sound and sense, uh, accent and intonation, uh, inflection of words and the tone or a stance he takes regarding his topic, it all determines the familiar style. I am repeating, look here and listen to me very carefully. Uh, the author's association of sound and sense, uh, his accent and intonation, inflection of words and the tone or a stance that he takes regarding his topic determines the familiar style. Uh, ha Hazlitt, as I said earlier also, I am repeating it again, says that uh, uh, it is like uh, coins. Uh, so you are not allowed to counterfeit the coins, it is customary to use the coins that are in currency, it is conventional to use the coins that are in currency, hence it is uh, advisable to the writer that they should use words, they should use uh, structures, they, su they should use uh, sentences structures, they should use idioms and phrases, they should use all those things that are uh, vigorously and forcefully in currency, so it is very. Uh, it is. It is. It is not acceptable. It is rather very insipid. It is rather very weak, and hence it will be rejected if you are counterfeiting the words. Uh, Hazlitt, dear friends, as an essayist, was capable of using common words, and he was capable of using those common words with a lot of energy. He takes a very common word in use and he injects those words, he energizes them with fresh and living significance. Uh, he knew the precise meaning of his words and he was successful in employing each word which could express his ideas, his thoughts his feelings very adequately and very precisely and this is what he wants uh, in his in his essay on familiar style this is what he wants this is what he suggests to uh, the writer uh, dear students aphorism is a very important uh, style uh, of, of, of Hazlitt and uh, his writings uh, he uses words very skillfully uh, his aphorisms uh, are so great, his aphorisms are so, uh, so, so, so accurate that, that the critics say, the experts of Hazlitt say that, uh, that his aphorisms can be expanded into uh, full length essays. Their students words appealed to his emotions, giving him capacity to express himself in a very picaresque and in a very picturesque, sorry, not picaresque, in a very picturesque manner, in a very lively manner. And to end my discussion, I would like to quote uh, Hugh Walker, Hugh Walker about Hazlitt. He says, and I quote, terse, a strong, nervous sentences expressing the ideas of a trained thinker and sometimes by a single word getting to the heart of the subject. Thank you very much.